It's blowing a gale here on top of the Brands Hatch Media Center. It's late October, and we're here for the final round of the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship. Races 19 and 20 today will decide the title. There's a warm wind coming from the south, so it's not cold, just promising some rain later in the day. A 68-point lead must guarantee, surely, Sean Hegarty and James Neve the title, maybe even after race one. They've had 13 victories so far this year, absolutely dominant. Compare that to the three wins that Roger Lovelock and Aggie Alta have had, and you wouldn't really bet against Hegarty, would you? Let's have a look at the table with that 68-point lead and Andy Peach in third. It certainly has been a close season. Uh, behind Peach, you can see how close they are there. 160, 148, 144, 141. Fantastic scraps around the fifth to eighth face mark, but that 68-point lead that Hegarty has at the top of the table, that's amounted to climb. John Holden's had a fairly good season. Ben Bygrave, spasmodic, hasn't done all the rounds. Uh, will we see Grab Muller back next season? I wonder. Ian Guy and Ben Ramsley, very respectable. A good crowd here because we have a triple header on the Superbike calendar. Lots of sponsors coming down here to have a look at brands to decide next season. We caught up with Dominic Mello of Paymundo. Well, the weather's taking a turn for the worse, but we're undercover here in the Paymundo.com awning. It's the end of the season. Dominic Mello, director of Paymundo.com. You put more than a toe in the water this year. Have you been happy with the results? Absolutely. I mean, we went all in and uh, we've really enjoyed ourselves. We've had a great time here at the paddock. Everyone's been really friendly and, uh, yeah, we can't wait till next year. You ran with Tony Brown, one of the, the younger talents. I don't think he's disappointed, has he? No, absolutely not. He's a very talented individual. He, uh, he's got a lot of passion for the race. He's got a lot of um, determination to win. And he, uh, it's a bit like the little engine that could. I think you set the ball rolling because we've got a number of people, not just from the financial sector, but from a similar war, internet business, that sort of thing, taking a look at this. Has it worked for you, Dominic? Absolutely. We've had a lot of interest, we've had a lot of discussions, and it's, it's really been a, a talking point for not just our suppliers and our customers, but for other people in other industries as well, looking to get into sponsorship, looking to do something. And, um, it, you know, it's the best billboard you can get in uh, motorsports, I think. So. Are you hoping to um, go again next year? It's a bit early to talk about 2015, but we're already looking over the horizon, all of us. I think, I think by this point we're pretty committed. Um, we've definitely had a great amount of fun, and I think that as long as uh, we finish out the day well, I think we'll be, you'll be seeing a lot more of us next year. Well, thanks for getting involved and visiting us personally this weekend. It's much appreciated. Absolutely. We're very happy to be here from all corners of the world. Race one lining up here, the grid, it's cold, it's windy, but it is dry. Sean Hegarty and Andy Peach side by side. Which one of those is going to get the drop into Paddock Hill Bend? Tim Reeves and Gregory Clues are on pole position, but look all the way back down the grid. This is a massive record entry. 28 F1 sidecars on the line then for race one of the Eastern Airways British F1 sidecar championship the penultimate race in the 2014 season. At the back there, champion challenger Roger Lovelock. Sean Hegan is the man on a mission, 68 points clear. He's got to be champion, surely. Is it in Sean Hegarty to ride with composure? Just to go for the points, I wonder. But once the race face is on, once the helmet is on, once the visor's down, it's win, 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 and he's going to go from it. But look on the outside, number 77, Tim Reeves, Greg Clues away. There goes Hegarty on the inside of Lovelock, who needed to get a cracking start. Lovelock's let Andy Peach through as well. Andy Peach, Charlie Richardson, number four, went through underneath, ahead of Lovelock and Aki Alto on the driver Wolf Laxton Racing BMW, the green and orange bike. Look! at the size of that entry. That is a spectacle to behold. Newcomers, Matt McLaurin there and A.D. Hope, number 25. The Bemsey winners are right in the back. I saw Tony Brown flash through. There's Matt McLaurin. There's Tim Reeves and Greg Clues, five times world champion. Tony Brown got a cracking start. Lee Barrett in the sidecar for Tony Brown this weekend. Up the inside goes Andy Peach inside Sean Hegarty. So Sean Hegarty not having it all his own way. He's got a battle on his hands and look at Lovelock. 
Look at Lovelock just stalking the Hegarty Racing Suzuki. That is quick, that Suzuki. But not as quick as the BMW. I suspect one or two drivers will be changing engines again going into 2015. Kawasaki seems to be the way everyone is going. Although Roger Lovelock, and I spoke to him earlier, reckons he's going to give the BMW certainly one more season. Andy Peach, Charlie Richardson, Sean Hegarty, Roger Boddy, and James Wynn out of it with a technical problem. Rumoured also that this is Roger Boddy's final race weekend. Rumoured to be retiring the organiser of the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship at the end of this season. We shall see. We've heard it before. It's a bit like asking the Prime Minister to step down, isn't it? Nonetheless, Roger Boddy out of the race. At the front, though, Reeves and Clues absolutely supreme on the SMT Racing Kawasaki. 1.193 behind Andy Peach, who's really come good towards the end of the season. And it has to be said, he needed to. Lovelock knows that if he's going to do anything about that 68... Oh, round goes Ricky Stevens. Well, I'm talking about points. Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charlwood, the number 100. Assured off his solutions. Kawasaki spinning out of the action, but they're back in business. The rest of the pack streaming past there. There is Stevens, right in the thick of the action. Let's have a look at that. Ricky Stevens, too much power on a bit of a damp patch there, going into Surtees. It is, as I say, and uh, when I was on the grid, I said it's damp and cold but dry. Well, it's not totally dry, as you can see. There are one or two damp patches, particularly on the left, as they come out under the bridge into clearways. Stadium area. Hegarty now easing away from Lovelock. Lovelock being dropped away here. He and Aki Alto have had a fantastic 2014 season. The Finn commuting all the time by air for these races. And uh, I asked them, are they going to be together next year? Well, Lovelock said if we'd won the championship, Aki Alto would have retired, which means there's unfinished business in 2015. So I suspect we'll see them together again. Peach, number four, Peach and Charlie Richardson on the L&W Contractors BMW, the big distinctive hump behind where the airbox is on these BMWs. By contrast, the Suzuki of Sean Hegarty much more shallow behind the driver, giving the passenger plenty of opportunity to get his weight forward as they need to do. This then, the battle for second. Peach has got it. Hegarty wants it. Lovelock thinks there's a chance he might be handed the spoils if they come together. They are certainly very close. Hegarty known for his corner speed. That's how he maintains his lap times with incredible corner speed on what is acknowledged as a slower engine. This is not a slow engine. The driver wolf BMW of Roger Lovelock. And he stayed very much in touch, the man from Marlborough. Into clearways again they come. A big crowd here. This is the middle of the day. Maximum spectator opportunity here at Brands Hatch for the final two races. Both the sidecar races on the same day. Look at Lovelock. Here comes Tony Brown and Lee Barrett. And right behind them, Pekka Pavarinta and Kersey Kainalainen, a young lady in the sidecar of Pavarinta, the four times world champion who has appeared, this is his second appearance in the championship. Peter Founds, number 72, being passed by Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charlwood. Lovelock then closing on the back of Hegarty and looking at the inside and going through. Now this is tremendous. Not only is ahead of him on the road, he's clawed back eight points because we have double points this weekend. So that was a significant pass. 68 lead is now 60. Lovelock is ahead. The man in the big points position is Andy Peach because the race leader, Tim Reeves, does not score. As a former World World current world champion wildcard, he is exempt and excluded from scoring points. Hegarty didn't like that. He's going to fight back and stay as close as he can, right on the back of Lovelock. Meanwhile, Andy Peach is getting away. Let's have a look at that move. 
Lovelock just moves out of the slipstream. Along the bottom straight there into Surtees. Tucks up the inside. A nice block pass. Cleanly through. Hegarty wiggled a bit on the damp stuff. He definitely got on a damp patch trying to slow it down. Being urged on now, Roger Lovelock. Anything can happen, you know, in the final round. This is top-class F1 sidecar racing. Hegarty has shown he's not immune from mechanical problems. Is it drama unfolding here in the penultimate race at Brands Hatch in the 2014 season? Lovelock and Alto there, ahead of Sean Hegarty. James Neve, Hegarty. What's going on inside that white crash on it? Can't let him get away. Got to keep my composure. Got to keep driving. Oh, a big wiggle sideways. Returning the compliment. Hegarty through. It was Lovelock that time who got it on the damp going in. You saw the back break away. And that's all Hegarty needed. Like a rat up a drain pipe. He was through. The very tall, lanky James Lee. What a pair. A formidable duo they have been this year 13 victories as i said in the introduction incredible hegarty leads lovelock ahead of them andy peach in a 50 point position and at the sharp end top of the race tim reeves and greg clues Back into the action here, Andy Peach now closing on the race leader on the road, Tim Rees, with Sean Hegarty, number 33, and James Neve now having broken away from Roger Lovelock and Aki Alto, but nothing to separate these four crews at the front. Barry James and Sam Christie leading Ian Guy and Ben Ramsley. There's John Holden and Andy Winkle, number 99. And playing catch-up at the back, Ben Holland, but through goes Ricky Stevens on Ian Guy. Ian Guy and Ben Ransley. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charlwood, the crew we're riding with now, I remind you, had a massive spin that collected it, kept it all together, and they are making their way through the field. I can see Simon Gilbert, number 11 there. Simon Gilbert, passenger this weekend by Jed Pilmore Brady in the green leathers. This young man uh, rode with Roger Body in the previous round. He's doing a good job here, I have to say. So let's hope he finds a permanent berth for the new season. Tony Brown, Lee Barrett on the paymundo.com bike, and they are our TV sponsors for this weekend. Steve Kershaw, number 29. What a close to the season he's had ahead of Pavarinta and Kersi Kainalainen. Now, Pavarinta, number 244, the four times world champion from Finland, is mixing it with some of these guys who are doing a really great job. Ben Bygrave, Justin Sharp on the blue machinery. Suzuki acquitting themselves well here. Bygrave has always had the speed. His problem has been funding, basically. There just isn't enough money. Despite the money that blue machinery have put in, there isn't enough money to keep them out regularly every weekend. But just look at his speed. He's dicing there with one of the best drivers in the world, pulling out alongside under the bridge about 150 miles an hour here before they go into Hawthorns. Then along this short sprint to Westfield, the right-hander out in the country. Craig Chaplow, Patrick Farrance in fourth place in the championship, just needing to score solid points here to maintain that position. Pavarinta number 244 seeing this long circuit for the first time. Indeed, his young lady passenger is certainly seeing it for the first time because she's only taken the sidecar passengering with him in the second half of this season. And Kersi Kainalainen, and the young lady in Pavarinta's chair, herself an accomplished 125 and 600cc rider in Finland. And, oh, we've got a red flag. We've got a red flag and a stoppage. This is on lap eight. So this looks like a result. No idea what that was all about, but we've got a champion, a fist in the air. They knew what they had to do, finish. Mrs. Hegarty, absolutely delighted. John Lawson putting on the number one shirt. It's game over, it's championship over, and we have the new champion for 2014, Sean Hegarty and James Neve, and what a season they have had. Did as much as they needed to do. Roger Lovelock and Aki Alto trailing them home. They know that the best they're gonna do is second this year. 
Andy Sloan and Guy Pawsey. Guy Pawsey walking back. Roger Bott has obviously parked on the grass because he went out in the early stages. Martin Kirk was the reason for the red flag. His passenger, Paul McArdle, thrown out. Give you news on Paul McArdle as soon as we can. Meanwhile, congratulations all round from this pair. Celebrations indeed for Hegarty and Neve, but race winner by just under half a second. Tim Reeves and Gregory Clues from Addy Peach, Charlie Richardson. The Hegarty Lovelock battle you saw. Tony Brown, Lee Barrett, very respectable. There in fifth place. Ricky Stevens recovered to 11th. You saw him pass Ian Guy and Ben Ramsley. Simon Gilbert had a respectable race, as did Ben Holland on a borrowed bike. He got a point. Very much a family affair. Team Hegarty Racing. First of all, Father Sean in the middle. This is really culmination of a season's hard work for you. Uh, yes, I think I just enjoyed it. Kind of nervous. <laughs> you love it. Don't, don't be nervous. You, you're the man behind the scenes. You screw this thing together. How stressed were you today? Very stressed. As you know, you see me this morning, and I'm just glad it's over. I just, yeah, well, nobody can tell you. Everybody keeps coming in and say, are you right, Sean? Are you okay? Is it good? Please go away. Leave me alone. That's all I can say. Go away and leave me alone. For a little while. James, first world championship for you. First British championship for you. Yes, yeah, first British championship for me, yeah. Over the moon. Great season. Just thanks to everybody, Sean and Sue and my mum and dad and Laura. Just thank you. Yeah. Good feeling in the team. It's a family team. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we always have a laugh. Have a laugh on the bike, have a laugh off the bike. It makes it more fun and enjoyable. Sean, you've entertained us really well. 13 victories you've had, a fantastic season for you. You'll be back next year, aiming to go one better, certainly defend the title. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely. We uh, need to change engines, so we've got a bit of a deal coming off. Hopefully, if I can tap Dad's piggy bank up enough to get some more engines. And yeah, just come back and have some more fun again. Do this again. Hopefully Tim and Ben will be here, so it'll be, be good fun. That's what I'm looking forward to. Many, many congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Can I just say a few thank yous? Like thank, thank you to Mum and Dad. They're my main sponsors. John Lawson, he always helps out. Juggy, of course, for being here. And everyone else who's helped me. 151, John Baker. It's just been a really hard year, but it's good. And that was the hardest race of the year so far. Nice one. <laughs> thank you. The final race in the 2014 season saw Sean Hegarty line up as champion. Alongside him, Andy Peach, Tim Reeves would be looking for a second victory here. It was very late in the day, and tyre choice would prove to be a deciding factor because conditions were decidedly dodgy. Earlier on, there had been a very heavy shower, but as you can see, the skies rapidly cleared. But the circuit at this point was still wet. Some people had opted for full wet tyres, Others had gone for intermediates. One or two ambitious ones, such as Barry James and Sam Christie, their number three, had gone for slicks, and they paid the price for that, spinning out at Druids on the first lap. Hegarty, though, ahead of Peach, with Pavarinta getting a much better start this time, eased away. Peach and Charlie Richardson were very quickly passed by Pavarinta, and his young passenger doing a fantastic job for him. It was not to go to plan for Sean Hegarty and James Neve, though, because the newly crowned champions spun out not just once, but twice. The second spin at Druids, deciding for them that it's game over. So they called it a day and retired on the grass. Meanwhile, at the front, Reeves still romping away. Positions, though, changing all the way down the field as Kershaw and Rob Wilson got the better of Tony Brown and Lee Barrett. Simon Gilbert was having an inspired ride this time. Lovelock was going backwards, possibly his tyre choice not being the correct one, but backwards and further backwards down the field went Lovelock and Alto. Although they were runners-up in the championship, they couldn't deliver the goods in the second race. Tim Reeves and Greg Clues, though, at the front, doing a fantastic job and recovering fast. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood, who next year will be campaigning a B Wiser Kawasaki under the Tommy Hill Superbike Race banner. So a fantastic announcement for this crossover between British Superbikes and the F1 sidecars in the paddock. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood will be part of the Tommy Hill Superbike team on their Kawasaki sidecar outfit. Steve Kershaw, Rob Wilson, very quick indeed, going past Lovelock as well. Tony Brown, Lee Barrett going with them. Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson doing a good job at the sharp end. 
looking at that tyre, and I'm not sure, looked as though Peach might have opted to go with a slick. Certainly Simon Gilbert's tyre choice helped him in the early stages, but as you can see, he was to drop further backwards. Tony Brown and Barrett getting the better of him just after Ricky Stevens did the same thing. Kershaw and Wilson were nibbling away as well. These four outfits diced throughout the race and further back, Craig Chaplow and Patrick Farrance just holding station, maintaining their unblemished record in the championship, scoring every single round. Tony Brown was destined to finish up as second best in the points for this meeting, bearing in mind that Tim Reeves and Greg Clues, despite taking the victory, scored no points. Pavarinta followed him home, a brilliant world champion 1-2. Andy Peach, the actual Eastern Airways points double winner, coming home in third place on the road. And if all that doesn't make sense to you, there the caption explains it. Andy Peach got the big points ahead of Brown, who finished second best on the day. Stevens recovered well. Kershaw, what a season he's had. Chaplow consolidated fourth in the title ahead of Simon Gilbert. Matt McLaurin, AD Hope, 11th, the Bemsey champions. They're going to be good next season. Looking forward to that. Biggs and Wilkes, John Holden, Andy Winkle. Maybe better stuff next year. Yeah, it's been great, isn't it? I've had a great ride re weekend. It's nice to be back here in this paddock. It's good that Pekka was on the podium as well. It's good, yeah. Two world champions on the top. It's good, isn't it? It was a good race, you know, it unfolded and, and at the end he was closing a bit. You obviously were showboating on the last lap anyway. Yeah, it was a bit of a tyre lottery, wasn't it? We went for a wet on the front and side and a slick on the back. Pekka had all wet, so yeah, it was good. I think, it, you know, the last few laps his tyre went off a bit and then, yeah, we just relaxed a bit because we knew it was all right. And yeah, good. I enjoyed it. I, I love Brands, actually. It's not far from where I live and he gets a good crowd and yeah, it's good. Pekka, this is the first time you were here at the Brands Hatch long track, but obviously you liked it. Second place. Yes, I, of course, the second, but I like it. And first time I drive here, and I'm very happy chance coming British drive uh, long track, and I'm very happy, and thank you, my passenger. Brilliant to see those world champions here. Hegarty then, 418 at the end of the day from Lovelock and Alto. Peach third ahead of Chaplow, Mr. Consistent Craig Chaplow, Patrick Clarence, Tony Brown, oh, Ashley Hall's in the standings, but Lee Barrett today. Horsepole Connell, they are teamed up permanently next year. That's official. We're going to see some great, great teams here next year. If the grid size here at Brands Hatch is anything to go by, what season 2015 is going to be? World champions as well will be allowed to compete for points next year, except where there is a world round. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's been absolutely terrific. See you next season.